Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this lecture, we're going to be discussing aplastic anemia. If you guys don't know, on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash madmedicine, you guys can go and watch all of our Hemonk videos in a convenient playlist for you guys for step one. And while you're there, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. We post brand new videos for you guys every single day. So uh, show us some support. Thank you. And with that being said, let's talk about normocytic anemias. These are going to be classified based off of an MCV that is normal, 80 to 100. That is the hallmark presentation, the hallmark definition of a normocytic anemia is the MCV, you are going to see that normocytic anemias are subdivided based off of hemolysis. So you can have non-hemolytic and hemolytic anemias, which can be subdivided into intrinsic and extrinsic hemolytic anemias. Now, when it comes to normocytic anemias, we are going to be discussing non-hemolytic anemia today. And the one we are discussing is called aplastic anemia. We have already discussed an anemia of chronic disease in our previous lecture, so go check that out on the playlist. We will discuss anemia of chronic kidney disease, and uh, we will also discuss uh, iron deficiency early stage, but we have discussed late stage in our microcytic anemia lecture, so you can go check it out there. Now, one thing to remember is that in normocytic anemias, especially non-hemolytic normocytic anemias, you are going to have a reticulocyte count that is going to be less than 2%. The reason why is because in these conditions, in the non-hemolytic anemias, you just have a decrease in red blood cells. That is what What's happening. The red blood cells are not functioning properly, but they're not, uh, not just that, you have a decrease in the production of red blood cells. Now, if you are lysing red blood cells in hemolytic anemias, your body is going to realize that you are running out of red blood cells, and therefore it is going to ramp up production of red blood cells, leading to an increase in reticulocyte count. We're not going to see that in non hemolytic anemias. So, when it comes to aplastic anemia specifically, you need to understand that this is a severe life threatening syndrome, severe, in which patients will produce, uh, will have a lack of production. Um, uh, of, right, of white blood cells, red blood cells, and platelets. All that has failed. You'll see peripheral pancytopenia, and you'll see a hypercellular, hypocellular bone marrow. The way I like to remember this is aplastic anemia is just a plastic bone. That's what's happening. You're going to have a aplastic, uh, uh, you're going to have a aplastic bone marrow that's not going to be functioning properly. Just like in a plastic bone, you don't even have any bone marrow to begin with, so it doesn't really function like it should. So I just think about a plastic bone that doesn't work, and uh, that makes me understand what's happening. This is a very severe condition, definitely understand that. So with that being said, you need to understand that aplastic anemia occurs in all age groups, in all genders, and there are several different causes which we will talk about, but mainly the symptoms you will see are fatigue, malaise, pallor, petechiae, mucosal bleeding, and infections. And that makes sense. The fatigue, malaise, pallor are going to be caused by decrease in red blood cell production. The petechiae and mucosal bleeding will be caused because of decrease in platelets and the uh, infections are all going to be caused due to a decrease in white blood cells. Your body can't protect itself. Now, the causes of aplastic anemia are going to include radiation and medications like benzenes, chlorophenicol, alkylating agents, and anti-metabolites. And that makes sense. These agents are going to mainly target rapidly uh, dividing cells. And what is a rapidly dividing cell in your body? Well, they are all located in your bone marrow. A lot of them are located there. And by using these, uh, these uh, uh, drugs that target rapidly dividing cells, you will also target your bone marrow, and it can lead to an aplastic bone marrow and aplastic anemia. Viral agents like EBV, uh, HIV, hepatitis also can cause uh, aplastic anemia. Idiopathic and immune-mediated causes can also lead this, and this is mainly going to be uh, a defect in the primary stem cells. Now, this can also follow acute hepatitis, and this is going to be the most common cause. So the idiopathic or immune-mediated are also going to be very common. It's the most common cause. And one of the uh, very low causes a very rare disease that you should know about. It's called Fanconi anemia. Fanconi anemia can also lead to aplastic anemia. So let's talk about that really quickly. Fanconi anemia is a, a condition where patients are going to have defective DNA repair enzymes, right? That's what's happening. The DNA repair is going to be uh, defective, and that's going to lead to bone marrow failure, and it can lead to aplastic anemia. Many, many cases, the DNA repair enzymes are the ones that are def uh, defective, and that leads patients, especially vulnerable, to DNA strand cross-linking, especially in rapidly dividing uh, cells like in the bone. Now, when it comes to presentation, these people will present with uh, a very short stature. They're going to have cafe au lait spots, which are just hypopigmented spots on their body. They're going to have thumb and radial deficits, as well as increased uh, incidence of childhood tumors like leukemias, myelodysplastic syndromes, uh, and squamous cell, car uh, squamous cell carcinoma, 
of the head, neck, and vulva. Now, when it comes to lab findings, you should know that these patients are going to present with an MCV of 80 to 100 because this is a normal cystic anemia. And in, in, and in, uh, um, in, in, in aplastic anemia, patients will also have a hypocellular bone marrow, which will show anemia, which will show leukopenia and thrombocytopenia. So a pancytopenia will be present. And when it comes to a bone marrow, if you do a biopsy, you will see a fatty infiltration, a hypocellular bone marrow, and the bone marrow tap will be dry because it is not functioning properly. Now, when it comes to treatment, if it is caused by medications, you want to stop the offending agent. If it is caused idiopathically or it is caused by an uh, immune-mediated mechanism, you want to give immunosuppression for those patients. You can also do a bone marrow allograft. You can also give red blood cells and platelets to aid in the anemia and the uh, the thrombocytopenia, not leukopenia, the anemia and the thrombocytopenia with the bone marrow and platelets. And you can also give GMCSF to stimulate bone marrow uh, and bone marrow production of all of these all of these uh, these types of cells, the white blood cell, the red blood cells, and the platelets. Now, with that being said, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow us on Instagram at mad.medicine and on Twitter at It's Mad Medicine. And you can find these lectures on your favorite podcast service for free. Just search Mad Medicine and we'll pop up, baby.